Good morning. morning. Happy Sabbath to you. God is good. Amen. Amen. Do you know how good God really is? Do you know that there is never a moment that goes by when you're not in God's thoughts? Did you know that? That's how much he loves each and every one of us. There is never a moment that goes by when you are not in his thoughts. You are never absent from the thoughts of God. He is desperately waiting to come and take you home with him. He has a desire to come and take you home. Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go? Brothers and sisters, I am inspired that Jesus is about to come. In order for him to come, we have a job to do. Amen? Our job is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ so that people can make a decision where they would like to spend eternity. Would they rather spend eternity with God in heaven or would they rather be non-existent after hellfire. Brothers and sisters, we have a job to do, and one of the things that we need to do is we need to invite God into our homes and be witnesses for him. Amen? Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, Lord, again, we thank you for another Sabbath day. We thank you that we could come together in your house of worship and praise your holy name. Lord, you are so good to each and every one of us. We know we are never absent from your thoughts. Lord, give us the desire to spread your gospel, to hasten your coming so that we can go home. We love you and we praise and worship you for sending your son who died for us on Calvary, who made all of this possible, Lord, that we may be covered in the righteousness of Christ and be justified in your sight and go home. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And I ask for a blessing today on my brothers and sisters that are here and those who may be listening later or streaming, let them receive a blessing for which they came seeking. Lord, now I ask that you be in my heart, that you fill me with your Holy Spirit, and that these words that are spoken here today are not from me, but from you on high. Let them burn and resonate in the hearts of those who hear to accomplish your work. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you have the desire for God to be in your home? Do you have the desire for God to be in your home and save your children? As a matter of fact, the the promise that we read in Isaiah chapter 49, turn there with me, Isaiah chapter 49, God makes a promise to each and every one of us. Isaiah chapter 49. When you're there, let me hear you say amen. Isaiah 49, we're going to go back to our scripture reading, Isaiah chapter 49 beginning with verse 25. Are we there? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee. I will fight for you, is what he's saying there. I will fight for you. I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will what? I will save your children. Isn't that the greatest desire of a parent is for their child to be saved? You know, brothers and sisters, sometimes it's because that God is not in the home is the reason that the children are not saved. We should make sure that God is in our home. Amen? The title of the message today is Hospitality Rewarded. Do you believe that if God is in your home that you will be rewarded? Do you believe that if God is in your home that it brings blessings to you and your household. I'm a firm believer in that. Turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Are we there, amen? 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning with verse 8. The Bible says, and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, pay attention to that, a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. Don't miss that. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. This woman is a woman who is great, the Bible says. She is a great woman. That means that she is wealthy. She has means. 
And she notices that this man of God keeps passing by her home. And she constrains him. She begs him, come to my home and refresh yourself. Come to my home and eat some bread. And every time he went through Shunem, he ate bread. Now, Shunem was a town in the valley of Jezreel, about five miles northwest of Mount Gilboa. And 16 miles from Mount Carmel. And he would walk this distance into Shunem. And this woman sees him and she constrains him to stay with her. She urges him, in other words. She urges him, come to my home and eat bread. Invites him into her home. You know, good things happen in the Bible when people are constrained. People are urged. I'm reminded in the book of Luke, there's two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And a third person joins them who they don't recognize as Christ. And as they're walking along, they are saddened and downtrodden because Jesus has just been crucified. And Jesus is with them and they don't recognize it's Jesus because guess what? When you are wallowing in sorrow, you don't realize that Jesus is standing next to you, going through it with you. They don't recognize that it's Jesus. And he unfolds to them all the scripture, showing them that these things had to happen. It says, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explains to them that these things were supposed to happen. As the night began to fall, he continued to walk, and they stopped to set up camp, and they constrained him, the Bible says. They urged him, stay with us the night. The Bible says that the message that he was preaching to them burned within their hearts. They didn't want him to go. They constrained him, and he stayed with them and ate bread, and that's when their eyes were opened, and they realized that it was Jesus. And then they ran back and spread the word that Jesus was alive. Good things happen when we constrain or urge Jesus to be in our homes. Do you know that Elisha, my God, is Savior? That's what his name means. He is a type of Christ. And he is passing through Shunem. And this woman constrains him. You know, the Bible says in verse 9, And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a what? Holy man of God, which passes by how often? Regularly or continually. You know that Jesus constantly wants to come into your home? Jesus constantly wants to come into your heart and make it his throne? Continually, he passes by. He sends you messages and blessings, begging, won't you let me in? Won't you let me in? This woman is no longer happy with him just passing by and inviting him for bread. She tells her husband, she tells her husband that this is a man of God, and later we're going to read that she says, let's build him a chamber in our home and invite him to stay with us. He's a holy man of God. The Bible says in 2 Peter, Verse, chapter 1, verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, so she recognizes that this man is full of the Holy Spirit and she desires to have him in her home. She desires to have him in her home. Verse 10. Let us make a little chamber. I pray thee on the wall and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. We want this man to be in our home is what she tells her husband. Let's not just have him come periodically. Let's make a room for him that he can stay with us. Does Jesus just come and visit your home or does he live in your home? Does he just come and visit on Sabbath or does he live in your home daily? She says, I want this man 
to live in our home. Let's make him a room in our home. And whenever he comes, he stays with us. Stays with us. She had great means, the Bible says. That means that she was very wealthy. But most people, when they get wealthy, they, they lose sight of what is important. And their eyes are focused more on their wealth. Not this woman. She recognized that wealth is something that is fleeting. And she wanted something eternal. How many of you are chasing the prize, but the prize is money or worldly goods? That's how we get blinded. When we are focused on those things instead of realizing that those are blessings from God and that you should not be praising the blessing, you should be praising the one who blessed you. She didn't lose sight of that. She didn't lose sight of that. The thing that I found interesting in this, Shunem. That was outside of God's people. Outside of God's people. It wasn't land occupied by God's people. This was a Gentile woman who invites the man of God. She recognizes that the Holy Spirit is on the man of God and says, please, come stay at our home. She makes arrangements. She says, We're, let's build him a loft. You know, when it talks about a little chamber, she's saying, let's build him a room over our house. Let's build him a room over our house and invite him to stay and let's furnish it that he may come in and refresh himself while he is here. You know, it reminds me that this is a Gentile woman and he's passing through this land that Jesus says in Mark 6, 4, but Jesus said unto them, a prophet is, is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. The children of Israel did not appreciate the prophets of God. The children of Israel did not appreciate Jesus, did not recognize him. It was the Gentiles who recognized. In this story, this Gentile woman recognizes that the Holy Spirit is on this man. Jesus said, a prophet is without honor in his own home. They don't recognize me. They don't see me for who I am. It was a Gentile who recognized that this was a man of God. Verse 11, And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into a chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he, and, and he said unto him, Say now unto her. He's telling Gehazi to say this to her. Behold, Thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? What can I do for you? You've done all this for me. What can I do for you? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. I have everything. I don't really need anything. I don't need anything from the king. I don't need anything from the captain of the host. I, I, just, I just want you in my home. I'm not expecting anything in return. I just enjoy your company. I enjoy breaking bread with you. Do you enjoy when Jesus comes into your home and breaks bread with you? She says, I enjoy having you in my home. I enjoy having the Holy Spirit is on you. I enjoy having the Holy Spirit in my home. I enjoy bake, breaking bread with you. I don't want anything else. This is what I long for. Verse 14, and he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door, and he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. She could not have children. And she said, Don't get my hopes up. I want a child. I long for a child. Please, I don't really need anything in return. I just enjoy this, enjoy doing this out of the kindness of my heart. But no, don't raise my hopes and tell me that I'm going to have a child. Thou shalt embrace a son. She could not have children, but what is impossible for men is not impossible for God. 
She receives the promise. She desires to have a son. God could make it possible. Elisha's promise to her of a son would be within a year. And it was beyond her, her fondest hopes. She longs to have a child. Verse 17, and the woman conceived and bare a son. In that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. He blesses her. She invites the man of God into her home and receives a great blessing, something she desires, a child. You know that when you invite Jesus into your home, that you will receive blessings? You will receive blessings. Too many times, though, brothers and sisters, we don't see the blessings. We see all the, that the glass is half empty. We don't see the blessings. Many of us got up this morning and didn't realize it was a blessing that you took a breath of air and opened your eyes. Because you know something? There were people this morning who didn't. It's a blessing. It's a blessing that you may have heat in your home as it's getting colder. It's a blessing that you have running water. Because there are places where people don't have it. Are you praising and thanking God for the blessings that he's sending to your home every day? He's sending you blessings, brothers and sisters. She receives a blessing because she invites the man of God into her home. You know, there's something that I need to say about blessings and inviting God into your home. You know that even when he's in your home, you will still face tragedies. Did you know that? He doesn't promise to get rid of all the tragedies. What he says is, I will be there with you and help you through it. We do have a sin problem. Sin problem in this world has brought death. It's because Adam yielded to the voice of the devil and brought sin into this world. And because that happened, because that happened, the Bible says that Jesus is, has come and died for each and every person, but Jesus is not interested in this world. He's interested in the people on this world. He's going to create the world new. He's going to create the world new. He's interested in you. That's who he's interested in. He wants your heart. He wants to come into your homes, into your hearts. He, doesn't, he can't stop the tragedies from happening. He can just help you through it. Because he's in your home doesn't mean that you're not going to experience difficulties. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you right now, that when you choose Jesus' side, you will be tested. You will be tested. The devil says, that person is a servant of mine. They just can't change sides. You remember the story of Israel as they were leaving Egypt? As they were leaving Egypt, free, because blood had been shed. They are marching out on a, a, on a, on a high day. Marching out, singing the praises of God. Lord, thank you for setting us free from slavery. We're in bondage. Thank you. And all of a sudden, the children of God are marching towards the promised land. And somebody says, I'm not willing to let my slaves go. In the story of Egypt, the Pharaoh is a representative of the devil, and he goes out to bring them back. That's how the devil is. If you have sinned, the Bible says that you were a servant of the devils. If you have committed a sin, but by the grace of God, Jesus washes you and adopts you. And the devil's not happy about that. And he will ride out after you and try to bring you back to bondage. Tragedies happen even though Jesus is in the home, but Jesus can help you through it. The Shunammite woman receives a blessing. She has conceived a child because she has asked the man of God into her home. She has received this blessing. Verse 18, And when the child was grown, it fell on a day, that he went out 
to his father, to the reapers. He's out working with his father, doing the harvest. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. Isn't that what we do with children, especially men? When a child says, I skinned my knee or I hurt myself, what does the father say? Go see your mother. Go see your mother. Go see your mother. He sins, he says, he says, go see your mother. My head, my head to the lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and what? And he died. Tragedy has happened, but the man of God was in the home. Tragedy has happened, although the man of God was in the home. Brothers and sisters, tragedies can happen, can happen, even though Jesus is in your home, but he will help you through the tragedy. He will help you through the tragedy. And she went out. And laid him on the bed of who? Of the man of God. She went and laid him on the bed of the man of God. The last place that she saw the man of God in her home, she lays her son in that area. And shut the door upon him and went out. Spirit of Prophecy says this in Prophets and Kings. It says, in her distress, the Shunammite determined to go to Elisha for help. The prophet was then at Mount Carmel. And the woman, accompanied by her servant, set forth immediately. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, and meet her. And say to her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And the servant did as he was bidden. But not till she had reached Elijah, Elisha did the stricken mother reveal the cause of her sorrow. Now, how far was it to Mount Carmel? I said it at the beginning. How far was it from Shunem to Mount Carmel? 16 miles. 16 miles. Five miles from Mount Gilboa, 16 miles to Mount Carmel. Don't miss that. 16 miles to Mount Carmel. She lays him on the man, on the bed of the man of God, and she shuts the door and she went out. And she called, verse 22, and she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. You know what she's saying? Nothing's wrong. I'm going to the man of God. Everything's going to be okay. Do you feel that way when tragedies strike, that everything's going to be okay as long as you can get to Jesus? As long as you go to Jesus, everything's going to be okay. She says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't trouble. Everything's going to be okay because I'm going to see the man of God. I'm going to Jesus. Everything will be okay. That should be what we should be saying, brothers and sisters. Amen. I'm going to Jesus, and I know everything's going to be okay. She says, I'm going to see the man of God. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. Has any of you ever ridden a donkey? A horse, a horse has a smooth gait. A donkey does not. Imagine riding a donkey for 16 miles. 16 miles. She is saying, let's go. Don't slow down for me. Let's go see the man of God. And it's going to be an uncomfortable and bumpy ride. But when I get there, everything's going to be okay. 
You know in life that we have bumpy rides? But as long as you make it to the foot of Jesus, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass. When the man of God saw her, what? Afar off. You know, when you, when you turn, turn ye, turn ye, for why would you die? When you turn from a life of sin and you turn to Jesus, do you know, like the prodigal son and the father, he sees you afar off? He doesn't, he doesn't wait. He sees you. His eye is on you always. He sees us afar off. Elisha sees her afar off. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, behold, yonder is the Shunammite. He recognized her. She's a long distance away, but she's coming to him. And he says, that's the Shunammite woman. Go see her. He recognizes her even though she's far away. Do you know that Jesus recognizes each and every one of you? You know he knows your name? You know he knows how many hairs are on the top of your head? For me, it's an easy count. But for you guys, for you, he knows how many hairs are on the top of your head. Do you know he knows what your favorite color is? Do you know that you don't even know what your favorite color is? Did you know that? Because you haven't seen every color. He knows if you would like the color, if you'd seen it or not. You know he knows what your favorite food is? Even though you haven't tried everything? That's how well he knows you. The Bible says he knows you because he's written your names on the palms of his hands. He knows you. And he loves you. He knows you. He sees the Shunammite afar off and he sends his servant. Behold, yonder is the Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say to her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, What? It is well. He sends a servant to meet her and says, What's wrong? And she says, Everything's going to be okay as long as I get to the man of God. There are things that are just meant for Jesus, not to be shared with others. She doesn't want to share this with the servant. She wants to share this directly with the man of God. There are things that we should be taking to Jesus and not sharing with others. She says, I want to share this with the man of God. All is well. Showing her faith, all is well. All is going to be okay. And when she came to the man of God, to the hill, she caught him by the feet. She throws herself at his feet, at the feet of Jesus. Isn't that where you want to be? There is comfort at the feet of Jesus. There is healing at the feet of Jesus. She throws herself at his feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, let her alone. For her soul is vexed within her. He knew something was wrong. Jesus knows what you're going through. And the Lord, the Lord hath hid it from me and hath not told me. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins and take my staff. In other words, go with my authority. Take my staff in thy hand and go thy way. If thou meet a man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again and lay my staff upon the face of the child. Go and don't stop. Go and don't stop. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I what? I will not leave you. I won't leave you. I won't leave your side. I will be faithful. I won't leave your side. How many times, brothers and sisters, when tragedy strikes, that we leave the side of Jesus? Not realizing that you're leaving the source that can help you through. The source, the power of the one that can help you in the times of trouble. She recognizes and she says, I will not leave you. I'm not going to go with him. I want to stay with you. I will not leave you. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice 
nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And when Elisha was come to the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. And he went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and he lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eye upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Type of Christ, Elisha, covering the child with his righteousness. When you invite Jesus into your home, do you know that he wants to cover everyone inside of your home with his righteousness? He wants to cover your children with his righteousness? Elisha stretches himself out across this child, covering him. The same thing that Jesus wants to do for each and every one of us to cover us with his righteousness. And the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child's eyes opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite. So he called her. And when she was come into him, he said, take up thy son. And then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself on the ground and took up her son and went out. Because she had invited the man of God into her home, her child was saved. The promise was that I will save your children. That's what we read in Isaiah 49, 25. I will save your children. How do you have your children saved? Invite the man of God into your home. Invite Jesus into your home and let him work. Go to the feet of Jesus. When tragedies happen in your life, go to the feet of Jesus and say, I will not leave your side. And I have faith, all is well. Whatever your will is, all is well. I trust you. You know, in the book of Job, it says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Your will be done, Lord. Do you know that the Lord wants to save us? He wants to save our children. Because our children, if you are a child of God, then your child is a child of his. He wants to save your child. But he's not going to force. He's not going to force. You see, we have this thing called free will. We have this thing called free will. And people can make decisions as to whom they will serve. Will you serve God or will you serve self? And by serving self, you're serving the enemy. Jesus says, I can bring you peace into your home. I will not stop tragedies from happening, but I will help you through them. Although the man of God was in the home, tragedy still befell. But because of her faithfulness and because the man of God was in the home, her son was saved. Is that your desire, friends? How is it with you? Is Jesus in your home? Or have you left his side? When tragedy or trials befall you, do you think about how I'm going to get out of this? Or do you take it to the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, all is well. I trust you. How is it with you? Do you have children that have left your home and left God, not living a Christian lifestyle? Invite Jesus into your home. Invite Jesus into your home and watch the miracles happen. Is that your desire to have Jesus in your home? Is it your desire? Jesus wants to be in each and every one of your homes. He wants to be in your heart, brothers and sisters. He wants to live there. And he wants to shine out of you and draw others. Father in heaven, Lord, again, we praise you and we thank you, Lord. Lord, many of us have had you in our homes at one time or another, and we've had you in our hearts at one time or another. But Lord, sometimes 
things happen in life, Lord, that we have left your side, not realizing that we're leaving the side of the one who has the power to help us through, the one who has the power to bring us peace. Lord, our prayer is, is that you keep us close. Keep us close to you, Lord. Let us see the blessings that are befalling all around us, Lord, and keep our minds focused on those things instead of the, the tragedies that are befalling all around us or the trials that are happening, Lord. Lord, and we ask that you save our children, that you help us, Lord, to be good examples and that by having you in the home will allow you to work on the hearts and minds of those who are in our household. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, do you have a desire to have Jesus in your home? Do you have the desire to have him in your home to save your children, to save each and every person that comes into your home? Hospitality is rewarded when you have Jesus into your home, brothers and sisters. Hospitality is rewarded when he's in your home. And when you break bread with him, when you break bread with him, hospitality is rewarded. Father, you see the hands raised of those who want you in the home, Lord, to save everyone who, is, who comes to visit and everyone who resides there, Lord. We praise you and we thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, we know that in order for you to be in the home that we have to surrender everything to you, Lord. We surrender, Lord. We give it all to you, for it's yours anyway. Lord, if you own our hearts, you own my home. If you own my heart, you own my car. If you own my heart, you own my children. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to you and to never leave your side. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen and amen. Our closing hymn is 309.